Hello class, we are here today to start another lesson and today we begin with sets. So when we talk about sets, we have to know its properties, the types of sets we have and so on and so forth. So let's start with sets, the word sets. When we talk about sets, we are talking about a collection of well-defined objects. So for a group of people, we can even say a set of football players, a set of books, a set of chairs, a set of students in the class. So a set must be well defined. So a set, a set is a collection of well defined objects. Now we have some different types of sets we can talk about. Some different types of sets. We can also talk about a finite set, a finite set, an infinite set. We can also have equivalent sets, equivalent sets, and then we have equal sets. Um, we have subsets and so on and so forth. So, normally we represent sets in set builder notations. So if I want to talk about letters of the English alphabet, so I can represent them by a capital letter A, which is equal to A, B, C, D, up to, let's say, Z. So, A, B, C, D, up to Z, this can be, uh, we can represent this as the set of English Alphabet. If I want to let's say represent vowels, I can say B is equal to A E I O U. This is the set of vowels in the English alphabet. A E I O U. So normally we represent sets by using capital letters and then having what a set builder notations. So the members of the set or the elements of that set are A, B, C, D, up towards Z. And this can be described as a set of English alphabets. And this is the vowels. So if we want, let's say, the set of natural numbers less than 10. So we can represent C by, let's say, the set of natural numbers less than 10. So we can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So these are the set of numbers less than 10, the natural numbers less than 10, and so on and so forth. Now, let's talk about the finite set. Now, a finite set is a set whose beginning and end can be found. So, for example, when I talk about A, A, B, C, D, up to Z, now, which is the set of English alphabets, this is a finite set because its first member and the last member can be found. So if I want, let's say, the set of, let's say, um, even numbers less than 10, the set of even numbers less than 10. So I'm positive, um, positive even numbers less than 10. So I can have a set D to be equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, uh, less than 10. So 2, 4, 6, 8. So these are my members of that set less than 10. Now, when we talk about infinite sets, now it is either its first member cannot be found or its last member cannot be found or let's say both. So if I have a set E to be, let's say, natural numbers in the world, so I can start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it goes on towards infinity. So this is an infinite set because its last member cannot be found. Then we have what we call equivalent set. Now, if I have a set A to be equal to A, B, C, and I have a set B to be equal to E, F, G. Now, A is equivalent to B because the number of elements in A is the same as the number of elements in B. So the number of elements we can be denoted as this, N of A is equal to 3. And then n of b, the number of elements in b is also equal to 3. Since they have the same number of elements, 
we say this is what? An equivalent set. Then when we talk about equal sets, if I have a set A to be equal to 1, 2, and 3, and I have a set B to be equal to 2, 3, and 1. Now, A is equal to B because the number of elements in A and the number of elements in B are what? The same. But the number of elements in A is the same as the number of elements in B. So A is equal to B. But we can also say that an equal set is an equivalent set. But an equivalent set is not an equal set. Why? Because the number of elements here are the same, but the members are not the same. But we call this equivalent. But over here, we have the same number of elements, and the members are also the same. So we call this an equal set. So an equal set is an equivalent set, but an equivalent set is not an equal set. Then we can talk about subsets. If we want to find the number of subsets, let's say a set should have. Let's say if I have a set A to be equal to 1, 2, 3. Now, if I want to find a set which is also, which will give me a subset of A. Now, if I have a set B to be equal to, let's say, 1, let's say 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then a now set. Now, in this case, if I have the set B to be equal to 1, B is a subset of A because all the elements in B can be found in A. The same way 2 is also a subset of 1, 2, 3 of that set A. And then this 3 is also a subset of this. 1 and 2, which is also part of B, which is a subset, is also a subset of A. Why? Because 1 and 2 can be found in A. 1 and 3 the same way, 2 and 3, 1, 2, 3 is also the same. And then we have what we call a now set, being part of the subset. So if we want to find the number of subsets in a given set, okay, we can find it by 2 raised to the power n, where n is the number of what? Members. Number of members in that set. Or number of elements. So if I want to find the number of subsets in A equals 1, 2, 3, number of elements in here is 3. So we shall have 2 raised to the power 3. To be equal to 2 times 2 times 2, which is equal to 8. So the members here are what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have 8 members. Now, we also have what we call a unit set. A unit set. Now, a unit set is a set with only one member. So, for example, the element 1. It's also a unit set. The element 2 is a unit set. The element 3 is a unit set because it has what? Only one member. So that's what we call a unit set. And we also have what we call the universal set. The universal set. We also have what we call the universal set. Now, the universal set consists of all elements in the set without repetition. So, for example, if I have a set A to be equal to 1, 2, 3, and a set B to be equal to 7, 8, 9, then the inversal set for this is the inversal set for A and B is given to me by 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9. That will be the inversal set for a and B. So when we talk about the universal set, the universal set consists of both elements in, or the number of elements, or all elements in the given set. So the universal set can consist of A, B, which can be A equals to something, B equals to something. So when we combine them without repetition, our universal set will come out as what? 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9. Because it has both what? A and B elements to join together.